Welcome to a practice SAT math question. In this question, we're asked how many unique real roots does the equation y equals x squared minus 10x plus 25 have? There are several ways to approach this question, but the main thing to remember is that the real roots or zeros of an equation occur where y is equal to zero. So to find the real roots, we'll set y equal to zero and solve for x, which means you want to solve the equation zero equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now I should mention this could have been written using function notation, where instead of y we have f of x, but since y is equal to f of x, the process would be the same. We'd set f of x equal to zero for the same reason why we'd set y equal to zero. And now to solve this quadratic equation, let's see if we can factor the right side. If it does factor, it'll factor into two binomial factors where the first terms in the binomial factors would be from the factors of x squared, which are x and x, and the second terms of the binomial factors would be the factors of positive 25 that add to negative 10. Well, negative five times negative five is equal to 25, and negative five plus negative five is negative 10, so we have minus five here and minus five here. Notice how in this case we have two equal factors, which means this is a perfect square trinomial. And if we wanted to, we could write this as zero equals the quantity x minus five squared. This will only be zero when x minus five equals zero, or when x equals positive five. So notice how we only have one unique real root. And therefore, our answer is C one. Now I should mention too that in algebra, because we have two factors of x minus five, even though we do only have one unique real root, we often say that this root has multiplicity two because there are two factors of x minus five. We could have also found the roots graphically. If we graph the given equation, we can determine where y equals zero by determining the x-intercepts since any point on the x-axis, the y-coordinate would be zero. So let's go ahead and look at this graphically as well. So we'll press y equals, and we have y one equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. To make sure we have the standard window, let's press zoom six. Notice how this parabola only has one x-intercept right here where it touches the x-axis, it does look like this would be the point five zero verifying our root, but let's also use the table to make sure that's true. We'll press second graph. Notice if we scroll down to five, when x is five, the y-coordinate is zero, verifying what we found algebraically. And if these two methods weren't enough, we could also use a discriminant to determine the type and number of roots that this equation has. So let's also review that. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. The discriminant is actually the part underneath the square root or the expression b squared minus four ac. Based upon the value of this expression, we can determine the number and type of solutions, or in this case, roots. If the discriminant is greater than zero and it's a perfect square, we have two real solutions or roots. If the discriminant is greater than zero and not a perfect square, we have two real irrational solutions or roots. And if the discriminant equals zero, which should be what we have, we have one real rational solution or root. And if the discriminant is negative, we have two complex solutions or roots. So going back to our problem, if we determine the types of solutions to our equation here, we'll also know the types of roots for the given equation. So looking at this equation here, a is the coefficient of x squared, so a is equal to one. b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 10. And c is equal to the constant of 25. We'll use these values of a, b, and c to determine the value of our discriminant, which again is b squared minus four ac. So we would have negative 10 squared minus four times a, which is one 
times c, which is 25. Well, negative 10 squared is 100, minus 4 times 1 times 25 is also 100. 100 minus 100 is zero, verifying that we do only have one real solution, or in this case, one real root. I hope you found this explanation helpful.